Hello, in this tutorial we will be teaching you how to create a basic teleop mode that allows your robot to move. We will start by assuming you are using my Canon Drive Friend. Let's get started. To begin, we first need to create a new file. To do this, right click on org.firstinspires.ftc.yourteamname, click New, and then click Java Class. Now give this class an appropriate name. To start, we need to first make this class extend one of FTC SDK's op modes so that it gains access to the FTC SDK. To do this, we write extends linear op mode in front of the class name. Now notice when we do this, it gives us an error, and that's because we need to implement a method called run op mode. This method allows us to write code that makes the robot move. So not having this method gives us an error. Now, notice this is called linear op mode, and this is because there are two types of op modes. There's linear op modes and then just regular op modes. Linear op modes have a run op mode method, which is where you put the code that you want to run, while op modes have two methods, an init method, which is what runs on init, and a loop method, which is code that is looped. So it's generally easier to do a run op mode. We will use a linear op mode for now because it's more versatile and it's easier to grasp. Now we need to put an annotation so that our robot controller can recognize this op mode and run this op mode. So to do this, go above the class and then write at, then write teleop, then put a parentheses and then say name is equal to, and then put an appropriate name. Note that an op mode is just slang for anything that we want the robot to run. Okay, so to begin, we want to declare our DC motors so that we can actually use them. So we first declare a DC motor, which is given by the FEC SDK. And then in the FEC SDK, we have something called a hardware map which is basically just a map of all the hardware in our robot, right? So then we go to that hardware map, we specify that we're looking for DC motors, and then we say dot get front left motor. Now you need to make sure that what you put in quotations is the ID that you put on your robot controller, otherwise it will give you an error and it won't match up. So you want to do that for each motor, so your front left motor, back left, front right, and back right. Now the thing that's a little bit weird about Mechanum Drive is that one set of the wheels have to be reversed, and that's just because of the vectors and the math behind a Mechanum Drive, which is beyond the scope of this video. So just know that either the left side or the right side of wheels is going to have to be reversed. So if you put the left side first and it starts going backwards, then make the right side reversed. Then the code after this is waiting for the start because whenever you have an op mode, you have two commands, init, which initializes the program, and then start, which is when it actually becomes running. So all of this is done on initialization, but this stuff will only be done when the program actually starts. This is another thing. So if a stop is requested while it's initializing, you want to make sure that it stops properly. So this is the main loop that's going to be running the whole time. So while op mode is active, so until you press, press the stop button, this code is going to be running. Is that similar to the at loop function in the normal op mode? So here, you first declare double Y, double X, and double RX, right? Because these are the inputs from your gamepad that are gonna determine what and where your robot moves. So this is gonna be your left stick Y, and you can make it your right stick Y, it doesn't matter. And you wanna invert it because it just makes sure that the mechanical drive works correctly. Then you need your left stick X. So the Y and X here on the left stick are going to determine its movement because the mechanical drive can strafe. 
And then the Rx is going to be its rotational movement, and that's going to be determined by the right stick x, right? So you declare all of these variables. Now, the next part is a little bit of math, because now you have all these variables. A mechanical drive is a bit weird in the sense that there are different vectors and there's different positioning of different wheels. So there's a little bit of math that needs to be done before you can process the values given by your stick. So all of this math is beyond the scope of this video, and you should just trust that it works and copy it in your program. So we have a GitHub, so just check it out there and you can see this code. Now lastly, we have all of these variables like front left power, back left power, front right power, and back right power that have been determined mathematically by previously uh, created equations. So now we just need to set the power of each DC motor to its corresponding power as shown. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to like and subscribe.